much, Captain Richards. Uh, welcome back to the media area at the entrance of this extra skill that we have rescued along with the international security. Thank you, Black Money, for this chief. Ready? Okay, good. Let me greet the residents and citizens of Dominica, and of course the, the Minister for National Security, the Chief of Police, and the Deputy Chief of Police, and uh, Superintendent uh, Valentine, the, the CEO of the port, Mr. Bartwell, and of course the media present. Well, thank you for being here. Um, I wanted to, to share with the country certain views of the government in, in, in our preparation for this hurricane, Hurricane Maria. And then I will ask the Chief of Police to update the country on the arrangements the police have made uh, to secure the state and to assure the residents of their own uh, personal security and that of their properties during the storm. I want to say to Dominicans that this is not a time for heroism. This much water in Dominica is dangerous, uh, given our terrain, and therefore persons should not wait for something to happen in order to take action. I want to make this very important point that the next few hours should be placed on cleaning up around the house and your properties rather than stockpiling weeks of food and other supplies. This is not a system based on advice that will linger very long. Therefore, the goal must, must not be on stockpiling supplies, but mitigating damage caused by flying objects as well as fallen trees, shrubs, etc. So our focus now should be on removing all of the potential hazards around our homes and our communities to mitigate against potential damage to our properties and even ourselves. I wish to ask citizens that we should not jam up the phone system with non-essential phone and data use. All the video footage can wait until after the system has passed. All of us in Dominica know the scenes to expect. Let us minimize the use of phone system to, to, so essential services and relatives and friends overseas can monitor the welfare and well-being of loved ones. Minimize idle chat and use of phones, particularly large data files. Please survey your community now and think especially of any elderly or indigent person whom the authorities may not have reached, who you feel could be exposed or vulnerable in these conditions. Go now and check on them, and if possible, invite them to your home or offer to take them to a nearby shelter. I want to also say to the citizens that the Ministry of Health has fully activated its emergency system and they have confirmed that all of the health systems are in place and we have sufficient and adequate supplies to treat our citizens if the need arises. I am also appealing to all that, that we should not treat with the approaching hurricane, that we, should, that we should treat with the approaching hurricane very seriously. Take no chances. As I said last night, yesterday afternoon, yesterday, sorry, I know we have prepared for numerous hurricanes this hurricane season, and none has visited us thus far. Let us not take this hurricane approaching us for granted. Let us take it seriously and use the time that we have to prepare ourselves adequately. The state shall not allow any lawless action in this country. The chief of police is here, they said, and he will give you the public 
and inform you on the arrangements for securing the state, its citizens, and residents. I want to also say to you that the state is also preparing in advance, and we have prepared all of the necessary legal instruments in the event we have to declare a curfew in either the whole country or parts of the country to avoid any lawless actions by those who wish to engage in such. I have been in touch with His Excellency the President on this matter. We want to say to residents who are in flood-prone areas should move to safer locations. Do not wait for the river to overflow its banks and then you, you try to cross the river or go through the flooded streets. Move to either the homes of friends and relatives or a nearby shelter. We have also, with the help of the Ministry of Public Works and Public Works Corporation, and in conjunction and collaboration with the heavy equipment operators in the country, we have placed heavy equipment in strategic locations. I will say finally that we believe the state has done all what it could humanly do in preparing the state for this approaching Hurricane Maria. The safety of yourself and your families remain largely in your hands, and therefore you need to take all of the precautionary measures to protect yourselves and your family and property from any harm or danger. I wish now to invite the Chief of Police to brief the country. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I am Daniel Carbon, the Chief of Police for the Commonwealth of Dominica. Let me acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Prime Minister, the Minister for National Security, Mr. Badwill of DASPA, Deputy Chief of Police, Mr. Valerie, Superintendent Valentine for the Central Division, the media. Good morning to all. The police force have been making preparations for this hurricane season. From 5 a.m. yesterday, Sunday, I placed the police force on high alert to deal with any eventualities for the passage of Hurricane Maria. On Monday, last week, I had a comprehensive brief with all my divisional commanders, the deputy chief of police, area inspectors, assistant superintendents, and all heads of unit. As recent as last evening, I again met with my formation heads to include the deputy chief of police, superintendent central division, superintendent north, superintendent south, all ASPs, area inspectors and formation heads to discuss the passage of Hurricane Maria. This morning at 9 o'clock, I had a, another brief with the general membership of the entire police force. I must say the meeting was very good and the men are highly motivated. The police force is in a state of readiness, I must say, to deal with all situations that come along during the passage of Hurricane Maria. All, all district police stations, all heads of unit, all units are equipped with motor vehicles. All district police stations, all units in Rosu have standby generators and storage of fuel. This morning, 
I received an additional six vehicles from the Secretary to the Cabinet. And those vehicles were deployed to, to two stations which had none, and units in Rosu. Our communication system is in good shape. The Marine Unit has a very powerful communication system, Harris radios, and we can communicate, as I indicated some time ago, with aircrafts. The police force will have men on patrol before, during, and after the passage of Hurricane Maria. The men will be deployed in the city of Rosu and, and the tongue of Portsmouth to ensure that business places, and I wish to emphasize business places in the city of Rosu and the tongue of Portsmouth, to be protected. The men are very courageous, as I say, and even during the passage of the storm, as far as it is practicable to do so, the men will be on patrol in the city of Rosu and the tongue of Portsmouth. I wish to take this opportunity to call on everyone to take heed to the advice and instructions given by the authorities, the police force, and ODM. I wish to call on the general public to stay safe and secure and cooperate with the police. Thank you very much. I will now yield to Superintendent Valentine if he so wishes to make any further statement. Thank you. All right, Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Minister of National Security, Chief of Police, Deputy Chief of Police, um, CEO of DASPA, members of the media, uh, good morning. My name is Richmond Valentine, Superintendent of Police, with responsibility for operations in the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force. Uh, from an operational standpoint, we can safely say that um, having activated twice before, we are better prepared now uh, to respond to any incident or accident. Um, presently, we are in the alert phase, and by that I mean we are ensuring that we have all the mechanisms in place to respond to any emergency or incident if we have to respond. So at police headquarters now, we are drawing up a detail so that if we are impacted, we can hit the ground as soon as it is possible. So patrols will be done until we are given the all clear by the ODM that patrols should stop. Patrols are ongoing as we speak. We are in constant communication with ODM. As a matter of fact, the NEOC has been activated, and we have a police officer who is representing the force um, at the disaster office, and I am in constant communication with him. So if there's an incident or accident anywhere within um, Dominica, we can provide the necessary response. We've also put in place a patrol that will visit the shelters um, occasionally and respond if there's any situation that warrants our intervention, um, that will be done. Those patrols also visit um, government buildings, government officials, uh, vulnerable areas, so that they can re report as quickly as possible so that the appropriate response um, can be made. Again, we are going to be at police headquarters and within the stations island-wide throughout the entire evening. So police officers are not going home. We provided all the sleeping accommodation for officers, so there is no need for them to go home. We, they were given time to secure their property and their families, so now is the time for us to respond if that becomes necessary, and we need to respond in full force. I should also say too that if we are impacted at the first light Police officers are going to be covering the streets, patrolling, ensuring that those persons with criminal intent will not be given the opportunity 
to commit any act of lawlessness. So from the first light, police officers will be covering the city and island-wide with patrols. I just want to take the opportunity again to advise the citizens of Dominica, listen to the updates from the ODM. Stay indoors. It is better to be safe than sorry. I'm also going to use that opportunity to appeal to the persons in Petit Savan. Again, now is the time for you to get out of Petit Savan. You need to get out of Petit Savan now. All right? I'm just, again, we are praying country. We just pray that um, maybe the strength will be reduced by the time it passes over Dominica. Thank you. Thank you, Chief and uh, Superintendent. Before I, I allow the, the media to ask any, any question which you may, you may have, I just want to uh, again appeal to the media and to the general public that we should caution against our own interpretation of the technical details relating to the hurricane. We, I, like myself, I go on the internet. Like yourself, I go on the internet. Like yourself, I also follow the weather channels. And all of the news media which provide um, some information. But the information which these new news mediums provide are not necessarily focused on Dominica situation. And we run the risk of using generalized comments and interpretations of the hurricane approaching in respect to Dominica. The ODM has been authorized as the medium to communicate the situation confronting Dominica. And I would say to the media and to the general public that you should rely exclusively on the ODM to provide you with updates on the hurricane approaching Dominica. I'll give you a very simple point which causes some confusion. If you listen to the, and you watch the televisions, the television stations, they will speak generally about the Leeward Islands. Now, we are no longer part of the Leeward Islands geographically or, put, or administratively. And the media speaks in this general term about the Leeward Islands and not making specific reference to Dominica. So let us, and when we get the information from the ODM, it is always better to replay the clip that you've gotten from the ODM rather than trying to interpret it. Uh, for the public. I know we all mean well, so it is not a situation of, of, of questioning anybody's motive. We're just saying that can cause and is in fact causing some confusion, um, especially in a time of great anxiety among many of us and our families. So I just want us to, to, to stick to this um, very closely. And again, the state is, is appealing to all that we should treat with the approaching hurricane very, very seriously. We are preparing to the fullest extent. We pr continue to pray to God that uh, we are not impacted. Um, and if we're not impacted, we say glory to the, to, to the good Lord. Um, and so that, but we are preparing um, for any eventualities. Um, and it's important that every family uh, and individual do likewise. I will, I will stop here for comments and allow the press to ask any question which it, it may have for either myself or for the chief of police. Yeah. Good morning, Vanessa Bruno, Vibes Radio. Uh, can you tell us, Mr. Prime Minister, if there are any mandatory evacuations? You know, there were some areas declared disaster zones <coughs> like Pilitsava and Paradise Valley. Yeah, there are no mandatory evacuations. As you know, what we have been appealing to, to citizens from yesterday is for them to exercise um, uh, their own actions for, for their own safety and, and of their family. The ODM listed last evening a number of communities that are prone to flooding and uh, also the overtopping, the overflowing of the river banks. And what we have asked uh, residents in those communities to do is to uh, relocate during or before the storm. Do not wait for something to happen and then you're trying to climb over 
um, some landslides and mudslides and, and walking through uh, several feet, feet, feet of water trying to get to safety. Our main intention with this preparation is to eliminate the possibility of any death caused by any negligence on any individual's part. Um, so we all know the communities, the, the communities have been mentioned, uh, you're to move uh, to either homes of relatives and friends or a shelter nearby. Do not wait for in the middle of the night for you to be moving. Now is the opportunity to do so. Now is the opportunity for us to ensure that we remove all potential hazards uh, around our properties and our homes and our communities and also to ensure that we can look out um, for the vulnerable within, among us, especially the indigent and the, the sick and the elderly, and to assist them in moving to shelters or to the homes of relatives and friends. Thank you very much. Curtis Matthew from DBS Radio. Um, the police chief said that officers will be deployed in Roseau and Portsmouth. Can he clarify that, that, that position? And um, Sabine Badwell, what is the position with the Douglas Charles Airport as we speak now? When I said that um, police officers will be deployed in the city of Roseau, and the town of Portsmouth, I make reference to these two areas because they are our main commercial areas. We have, in addition to that, we have 19 or so of district police stations. And every police station is on high alert. As I said earlier, the police stations have the resources that they need. They have the resources, they have vehicles, they have generators, they have stand standby um, storage free wheel. I even went as far as to make sure that they provide them with the necessaries, meals, water, whatever the case is. They have their resources with them and they are ready to go. But for sure, you will see a heavy police patrol in the city of Roseau, there is not going to be any looting. If the storm passes, we're going to be in control very early before the storm, during the storm, and after the storm. I briefed my men this morning and I said to them, if mischief makers can venture out during the passage of the storm, we have courageous and brave police officers can, can, that can do the same. I'm not putting them in unnecessary risk, but they have very good training and they know how to conduct themselves, and we have to make sure that we're on top of the game. Mr. Badwell. Let me say good morning again to the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Raven Blackmore the Chief of Police, the Deputy uh, Commissioner of Police, uh, Chief of Police, uh, the Superintendent, and the media. Let me say that we have been active for the last two days in um, a state of preparation at all our seaports of entry, especially so at Douglas Charles. We have um, flights have ceased uh, to operate from about 6.30 last evening. Uh, we have had all flights for today cancelled and we've gone into an advanced stage of preparation whereby we have taken down necessary antennas and the other things that are required to bring the airport back in, in a very quick way, uh, providing that we have no other difficulties at the airport. So we have prepared the airport and we are in a state of preparation and we are awaiting word from uh, the ODM and the Met Office for an all clear. And once that is given, we will try to see how we can get the airport back and operational in the quickest possible time. At the seaports, we've dealt with the ferry services and up to about, again, 6 p.m. last evening. Uh, we had the last uh, ferry going out to uh, Guadeloupe. 
And we have prepared the terminal in the best way possible that we can. And we will await uh, once the conditions for marine activity is suitable to again um, invite the ferry once all clear is provided. At the, sea, the main seaport at Woodbridge Bay, we've done all the necessary preparations that can be done, and we have assisted a number of persons um, with their fishing vessels and, and other um, gear. Uh, we await the, the system as we, we do, and we will do so. And again, once the all clear is provided, we will make the necessary assessments um, and provide uh, the information through the channels that need to be done. And we can assure you uh, that once we are able to bring the seaports of entry back into operation, we'll do so within the shortest possible time possible. Thank you. Will there be no more, no more questions? And of course, the media too, you have to ensure that your your properties, uh, your family are, are also safe. I want to uh, publicly thank the members of the private sector for their cooperation, all of the agencies of the state for the actions taken uh, as we prepare ourselves for this hurricane, the many shelter managers and uh, the assistant managers and the volunteers who are assisting with the, with the provided management to the shelters, uh, individuals who have transported the, um, those requiring to be at shelters. We want to thank all of you. The media in particular, we want to give you a, a special mention for your continued willingness to make your um, media outlets uh, accessible to the various state agencies to disseminate uh, information to the general public and I I suspect that you have been carrying these um, briefings uh, at no cost to the Treasury and want, I want to thank the proprietors of the um, various radio stations and, and television stations um, for what I have been told in these circumstances is uh, part of your contribution towards this, this state um, the state preparation so I, I'm hoping that this is a that uh, I will get a call from the from the proprietor saying that what I said was, was accurate. Um, let us keep safe. Let us all continue to pray. Um, let us not take anything for granted. Um, as the old saying goes, rather be safe than sorry. And let us prepare ourselves adequately and properly in the event of this happening. We will keep on giving the country updates in the next several hours, over the next hours, uh, as the storm approaches. Um, so please listen to the to your radio stations for the information coming from the ODM and from the assigned government officials. Uh, thank you and God bless you. Let us remain uh, optimistic that the good Lord uh, will help us through in this approaching hurricane. Thank you.